Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Home is Where the Dark Is, episode 60, with Sin Kieran. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Excellent. I can't believe it's episode 60 for you already. Yeah, you were, when you came in January for the first time, that was episode 18. Jesus, So, man. yeah, I've been cranking like them out. flying by, man. Yeah. That's so, awesome. yeah, the, you're the second repeat guest. The other one is Annabelle deflux nice but yeah so i want to get right into uh you know the hot topic here is you know you had your debut gig at the garden amphitheater and there's been a lot of buzz there's been a lot of people talking about you know how awesome it was so first thoughts um how are you feeling after the decompression from all you know the gig from the excitement from from everyone you know hitting you up like first thoughts like how are you feeling about the gig Amazing. Uh, I'm still actually, I still have a little bit of that buzz going on, to be honest with you. Um, it, you know, it had been almost four years um, since I had been up on, you know, that kind of stage with that kind of band. And um, <clears throat> I had almost forgotten what it felt like. And after the gig, man, I was just like, my head was up in the clouds. It was really, it was a, an amazing feeling and, and it just brought me back, it brought back a lot of memory, good memories, you know, of what it feels like and what it felt like um, to do a gig. Um, but just amazing, man, positive, everyone, the band, I'm very proud of all the guys in the band. I thought they did an amazing job. Um, we pulled it off. Um, it far exceeded everything, you know, beyond my expectations, man. And like I said, I'm still a little bit buzzed from it which is good. Um, it's a high that for me, like I don't get anywhere else. And it's very difficult sometimes for me to try to explain it to someone that has never done it. Yeah. Um, like to other musicians, like you can kind of relate, you know, yeah. you get it. But when I'm speaking to people that, that um, aren't musicians that have never done it before, it's very difficult um, to put into words. It's just this feeling that I don't know, man. It's like um, only on stage do I feel like I'm completely confident and completely on top of the world. And um, <laughs> when I'm not off stage, it's a different thing, it's a different person. Um, so it's it's very difficult, but I miss that feeling. And I was actually having that conversation with someone um, recently, and I said, you know, it's almost like you're constantly chasing that high. At least that's what it feels like for me. And I think that is kind of what some people do um, in other forms is to try and maintain that high when you're not doing it. And, you know, me being clean and sober my entire life, the next high is just the next gig. It's the next time I get to do it, you know. And um, I, I feel equally, I mean, I feel a high when I'm writing and when I'm creating, but it's different than yeah. the stage high, you know. Um, so at least I have that, but it's just, it's like, you're constantly just, you want that, that feeling again, you know? Yeah, man. I've, I've played a few shows myself and I totally, I totally understand. It's like, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, it sounds a bit much, but it's true in a way. It's kind of like, it's your, it's your godlike moment. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you feel like larger than life, like Very much uh, so. no one can touch you. Um, Very much so. Yeah. And for me, it's like, it's a combination of like, a lot of it's like dopamine adrenaline like if, especially if you're like really if you're moving around a lot and you're like yeah. sweating and you're like yeah it's very therapeutic um, very much experience so. so yeah how was the uh how was the the day after i'm sure you were dude i, I when i just shot a music video and just like just from that uh, i was sore as fuck <laughs> just from headbanging and shit, so. well you know luckily i mean we rehearsed i think we rehearsed f we had five rehearsals before the gig and um the last like two or three rehearsals we were actually sort of going through the movements and the motions you know so at rehearsals actually where i was feeling it more yeah um because i hadn't moved like that in almost four years so my neck was just and my lower back is just you know trashed um so luckily it we were a little prepared for the gig so after the gig i don't know if it was just the adrenaline that I was still feeling, you know, the day after, it's almost like I didn't even f really feel sore. Like my neck didn't even really hurt. Um, I was just still too high from it. Yeah. You know, um, but you know, it's been a little over a week now and, um, and I actually feel okay. It's just, um, you know, uh, ready for the next thing. Hell yeah. You know, 
Yeah, I mean, so this was the first show, and you guys played. You played two, two unreleased songs, correct? Correct. Yeah, we did four songs from our from the five songs that we recorded on the EP, which I'm staring at right now on yeah. the wall, which looks awesome. Oh yeah. Um, and um, I mean, it's amazing. It's funny to you know to think, man. This is where, this is where it was created. This is where it it, it you know it took its first sort of shape and form um you know bring me bringing it from my house to here was it was like the next step and then you know to take it to the stage just sort of completed that that circle so yeah, yeah. you know um and like I, I always tell people you know to me you're you're like the other member i look at you as like almost like the invisible member of the band because you brought so much to the songs um and you really put i think you really put a lot of yourself into them um you know and that's that was a huge thing for me man because clearly you have more knowledge when it comes to that um more tools you're able to um understand what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to communicate when we're writing when i'm when i'm writing with my music and stuff and that's a big thing for me because um i've worked with other you know producers and engineers before and sometimes it's a struggle um you're just not talking the same language yeah. and with us i mean just from day one it was it was natural it was almost like you were finishing my thoughts or my sentences on what you know what type of sound i wanted here what i was trying to you know do here and stuff like that so that's a huge thing and and you know i, I want to make sure that everyone knows um that alex here is a big part of of the siglo sound well thank you for saying that i agree with you like you know we just kind of click right away musically and um being able to you know kind of we kind of finish each other's musical sentences in mm -hmm. a way so yeah i mean uh you know i've the past you know five maybe five to ten years like i've been slowly learning more about <clears throat> orchestrations and finding uh picking you know my favorite instruments here and there mm -hmm. and you know technology has gotten better over the years um especially in the past like five years the virtual instruments have just gotten yeah. so good so i was glad that once we started working together i kind of had my i had my uh palette of of tools ready yeah. for exactly what you needed. So yeah. that was a good timing there. And um, yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that. And um, yeah, I'm glad everyone liked, uh, you know, the way the, the, the EP came out um, awesome. And yeah. uh, I think when I saw you guys play the first show, I was, I was shocked how well the, um, the tracks like the the strings blended with the live show and yeah. i was i was expecting it to be good but like i was really blown away by how how well they were um just prominent in the mix and how well it blended with you guys playing together and uh yeah it sounded huge yeah that was um something that i was very like concerned about especially at rehearsals you know um when we had our uh, Josh, our front of house guy, come down, I was, I mean, we had a lot of talks, and I was like, "Look, man, you know, this is kind of what I want it to sound like," and you know, he had the music and he had the songs, and he was just like studying them. Um, so I think he did a great job, and I think it it translated very well. It like you know what I was afraid of, or what I didn't want to happen was either for you know all the electronics and and stuff to be buried, yeah. or to be completely over the top to where you know it just it didn't sound good. Um, I thought from what I'm hearing from people is that it just sounded perfectly mixed and blended. So yeah, very happy with that. Yeah, yeah. it was a great blend. Yeah. And, um, so how did it feel being up there after so long? Uh, like we're obviously, you know, there, are, you know, there's always kinks to work out at a first gig back after so long. But I mean, how did it feel? I mean, were you, you know, were you were you surprised by the reaction or like what was your general like feeling being up there again? Um, you know, yeah, obviously looking back now, there there's always kinks and there's always things that you're like, oh man, I kind of flubbed that or I kind of did this or whatever. But to me, it's it's. Um, someone's presence and energy and performance outweighs sometimes the technical stuff that might go wrong oh, or yeah. the little you know yeah. notes that you flub here and there but for me personally to get out there when i walked out on stage um i, I don't know it it felt like home it was really weird man it was like i those 4 years it weren't didn't exist um which was kind of a little surprising to me 
Um, cause I didn't, I didn't know what it was going to feel like for me. I didn't know if I was going to freeze. I didn't know mm -hmm. if I was going to, because I had those thoughts, you know, before this gig, um, you know, I was starting to self doubt and I was starting to like freak myself out really. Cause I was like, man, you know, it's been four years. I don't know. What am I going to do? Like, is it going to feel the same? Am I going to know what to do? Am I going to, you know, what's going to happen? And, um, as soon as the intro started going and I walked out on stage, man, I don't know. I just felt comfortable again, which is the feeling I've always had on stage from like, from the first time I walked out on stage in my eighth grade talent show, I had this ink feeling of just being completely confident and comfortable. And it was the same thing that holds true now off stage, you know, not so much, but as soon as I get up on stage, I just feel comfortable. And, um, and it felt great, man. You know, uh, adrenaline started kicking in. The band just brought it, I thought. And, uh, you know, I thought we, we all had very good chemistry up there. And just hearing the crowd response, um, seeing people, you know, some people knowing the, the songs and, and, and all that stuff was just, it was incredible, man. It was Hell amazing. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could, I totally picked up on that too. Cause like, I, you know, like I told you before, like, you know, for the first show, it's, it just seemed like you guys had been playing for months and, and have already maybe done a bunch of shows already. Like it was so locked in. And I think a lot of it had to do with obviously the rehearsal leading up to the show, but like the rehearsals, but like, I think you just, your, your chemistry as yeah. band members and as yeah. friends and everyone like get, gets each other and everyone's on the same page and wants, yeah. you know, the best uh, possible performance. So yeah, that was very apparent right away. That has yeah. a lot to do with it, man. Um, I think that, I don't know. I just think that we got lucky. I got very lucky um, with these guys that are in the band. Um, we all click. Um, all very distinct personalities in the band. But I think that's what, you know, that's part of the magic and that's part of the chemistry. Because if you have, you know, four or five guys that are identical, exactly the same, I mean, there's no real personality there. Yeah. Um, I think some of that needs to be there just to cause a little bit of uh, some type of friction, yeah. but it, it creates that magic. And, um, you know, we, I didn't know, I'd never played with these guys on stage and I didn't know what it was going to be like, but from the very first rehearsal, um, I sort of like had a huge sigh of relief. Um, you know, I, which I think you went to the very, yeah, the very first one. And, um, just as crude as that one was, and as, you know, as raw as that one was, I was like, okay, we're going to be able to do this. You know, it's going to be fine. Um, and then taking this all through the rehearsals and stuff and then getting up on stage just felt natural. And I thought the guys had did great, you know, yep. um, and it just felt really good. It felt like we were up there for like a minute. Like it went sign. by so fast, you know, but it was, it was funny is the, a lot of feedback that I was getting from people that were coming up after the gig. Some people, you know, well, most people didn't know who we were, but they were coming up and they're like, oh, like, are you guys on tour or like, are you guys just doing this gig and you guys are going back? <laughs> like people thought we were like a touring band or something. And some people did come up to me and, and thought that we'd been around for like a while. Yeah. And, um, not surprised, man. Yeah. And I was like, no, nah. I mean, which is all great to hear, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, that, you know, it, it translated and that we brought our a game and that, you know, um, people got it and they seem to like it so you know i think you really did a good job of choosing the members because everyone has their own strengths except for our drummer except <laughs> goddamn jordan <laughs> except for jordan no sorry jordan um but yeah it's just everyone like uh it's like the you know different pieces of the puzzle come yeah. together and it just makes this fucking monster on stage yeah. and everyone has their their strengths and everyone is doing their thing and just the as a collective it just fucking exploded and um it yeah. was it was killer and yeah i mean you know i was i was really impressed too with um like pedro's charisma and like mm -hmm. characteristic as a front man he has a, his own thing yeah. going on and he really brought he really brought the um originality to the stage and it really worked well with everybody and so i was i was really impressed by that because he he just kind of owned it and he wasn't afraid to do his thing and yeah you know bring it you well know? he you know he's he's legit he's the real deal it's not he's it's not a pose it's not um anything that's fake or phony that is him and he's 
like that, you know, all the time. Um, and he's an amazing front man. I thought he killed it. And that's a very important thing to have in a band, I think, you know, um, is to have a very strong front man with a great presence. And yeah, he definitely brought it and killed it, you know, which I knew he would. And, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I, get, I go back to feeling and thinking we just I just got very lucky with these guys, um, you know, because it could go either way. And, and sometimes you have great players, but maybe the chemistry is not there right. and the presence might not be there. And, and that's something that that, you know, I've always been um, very pro is um, meaning pro like uh, stage presence and, and playing with feeling and, and stuff like that over, you know, um, being some, you know, virtuoso, which I clearly am not. But I think that I play, you know, it's 100 percent my heart and soul um, that's up there. And I think that that translates sometimes more. Oh, yeah. Than, you know, yeah. Um, than, you know, shredding and stuff like that, which is nothing wrong with that. That's amazing. But that's never been me. Um, I think we're more of just a sort of raw emotion up there. And that's what we bring to the table. Yeah, it, it definitely shows, in, in my opinion, like it's easy to pick out those people that maybe are up there on stage um, trying, kind of pretending to be something they're not. And I think the audience can pick up on that. And yeah. I think that's a perfect example of why, um, you know, Pedro and Pedro's like character on stage is is so impactful and so uh, real because it it's it's almost not a character. It is who he is. Exactly. That's, that's what he believes in. And he's yeah. into all the, the ritualistic shit and all that. And um, I think when there's a front man that kind of is just posing and like kind of faking it and it's, you know, it's of course it's a lot of it is a show, but some people just go too far and it's like they're doing shit that they don't believe. It's not really them. It's like they're just yeah. doing it for the big show. But I think I think most people can pick up on that when it's not um, when it's not real. And yeah, I mean, yeah. it almost it almost becomes in that when it's too far like that almost becomes like a character of a character. Right. And it like, it just seems like phony. Yeah. And absolutely. doesn't seem real. Yeah. And you know, Pedro, all the lyrics that Pedro writes, I mean, that's his life. Like he, that's what he practices and that's what he does. So I think that that definitely comes through and translates, you know, live on stage. So. And another thing too, is you can always tell when, you see a live band and maybe one of the members seems like a little like just out of it, not as interested or just kind of there. Like, drummer. like what <laughs> it's all, it's either the drummers or like the bass players just kind of like <laughs> yeah. derping. But, but I mean, with you guys, everyone is, it, it's clear that everyone is very passionate. Everyone is very, um, you know, everyone wants to be there equally. Um, yeah. and, uh, it shows. So yeah, that's very important too. You know? Yeah. You know, we, um, after rehearsals, uh, oftentimes we would just kind of hang and talk either out in the parking lot or wherever. And I think those things are very important. Um, I, I wanted to try to make sure that, that we had time together, like not just playing, but just us hanging. Um, because I think that, that adds and it, 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 it sort of develops a camaraderie right. and a chemistry and a bond and stuff like that, which I think is very important. Um, cause I, I hate to be, which I've been in those situations where it's like, you just show up and it's almost like you're just clocking in yep. and then you leave and then that's it. Um, it, that to me is just, I don't know. I mean, it, it just, that's not what I'm about. That's not how I like to be in a band. Um, unfortunately I have been in those situations and it sucked because it just feels like I'm, it feels like I'm like, I'm doing a job or showing up to, to do a, a job or something like that. And, um, and so we got to hang quite a bit. So, you know, we're, we're all still getting to know each other and stuff, but, um, but I think it helped. Um, we're definitely all on the same page. We all talked about all kinds of stuff that we want and, you know, the things, our goal, um, and we're definitely all on the same page and, um, and it definitely shows, I think. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, Let's talk about the uh, the debut EP released uh, back in January. So, what has been like overall the response you've been getting um, about that EP and like the different songs? You had uh, Polo Siglos was the first single with the video, then uh, Marir, and then you had the three other tracks. So, like, let us know how has the response been to the EP? Like, just from from your fans and people reaching out to you, they want more. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like man you got to do another run like you got to everyone wants more so 
you know, I might do another run of that. Um, but the goal now is to do another five song EP. Um, like that's the next thing that, that, you know, I have sort of up on deck. Um, but people, you know, dig all those songs, man. Um, I get messages all the time from people like, oh, this song is like my favorite. And everyone has like a different song, which is, I think, really cool. Like, it's not like everyone is just going towards one song. Um, some people are like, Yavis is like their absolute favorite song. They're like, they love that tune. And that's the most different on that, yeah. of those five songs. So I'm glad that there's there seems to be something for everyone there. Um, it's not just sort of one-sided. I think that there's different characteristics about it um, and to it. And so, um, yeah, it's been a great response. I can't wait for the next one. Um, you know, I've already got, we've got two already that um, haven't been released that will be on this next EP. And then, you know, another three to go for it. But um, yeah, it's been positive, man. Yeah, I love that EP because it's not only that, you know, we, we developed it together, but the the songs are so, like, they fit very well together, but each one is is really different you know yeah. they all have individual characteristics yeah. and um i'm not surprised that people were you know saying oh this one's my favorite and like, yeah. it's, it's different every time because yeah. they all have they're their own monster they're their own like uh, individual um like story and yeah. like a different emotion and feeling from each one absolutely but i think but they still it still works there's still a continuity there um it still works together you know yeah um but it but i love the fact that people do hit me up with different tunes that they dig um i think i'd be a little worried if they were just naming one song that they liked right. you know what i mean right um so i think that's a good sign um and i want to do that for the next one as well you know um something that we discussed you know even when when we we're in here doing those first five songs is um i i don't want this i don't want us to be pigeonholed into one thing um you know that's why we have electronics on one song and orchestration on another and I, I want to be able to constantly grow um obviously it's always going to be more of an extreme metal you know project yeah. but i want to bring in you know different elements and different things that i've done um to all the songs so i don't want us to just be you know oh they're just this right you know i, I want us to have that flexibility absolutely yeah so you're planning on um we have two more tracks that that are done. So you want to do another like another three tracks, and then possibly put out. Um, or you want to put out another five song EP yes. probably next year at some point. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So what about? Uh, is there anything you can tell us about possible future gigs that you're planning? Or yeah. So um, the next gig. It was funny. So I was having this conversation with Alex um, and a bunch of people after the gig that we just had. I said, okay, I'm going to take some time off. I'm going to mellow out for a little bit <laughs> and I'm going to relax. And, and, um, and sure enough, um, we got hit up to do another gig like immediately. So we've got a gig coming up, um, Sunday, November 5th at, uh, I guess it's called 1720 that venue in downtown LA. So this will be like our first LA proper show. Um, it's a free gig. I think it's called the Sunday mass is what they're calling it. Um, so yeah, we uh, we've got to get right back in there and, and start rehearsing. Um, the gig's only like a week and a half away or something like that. So I think we're ready, um, but we're gonna go in and rehearse. And I'm excited because it's our first LA gig. I'm glad it's a free gig. I hope people can come out. Um, there seems to be an excitement and a buzz going on. Uh, the promoter hit us up like you know a couple days ago, shortly after that that Garden Amp gig, which he wasn't at. But he was getting messages and calls from people, you know, and saying, hey, you should, you know, check them out. And so he reached out to us and now we just got this gig. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Like in a perfect world, what would you like to happen next year besides put out another another record? Uh, are you looking to uh, play, play some more local shows or do you like in a perfect world, do you want to just get out there and do, do touring or festivals or like what would be ideal? Ideal for me, honestly, is I would really love to do some more L.A. shows, meaning, um, 
you know, uh, like opening slots for some some bands that are coming through town, like some, you know, um, touring acts and stuff like that. That'd be ideal for me. And then obviously to release um, an EP in early 2024. And ideally, I would love to get us on some festivals in Europe for the summer. Um, you know, in a perfect world, yeah, I'd love us to, to get on, you know, something like Hellfest or Bloodstock or Download or um, With Full Force or, you know, all those, you know. Um, I'd love to do a run of the UK and Europe. Um, and of course, you know, at some point, I'd love to do a run of the States as well. But that's just kind of where I'm at. Um, some LA dates, you know, opening up for some bands, the EP, and I'd love to get us on a festival. And even Mexico, actually, I was yeah. in, in, in contact with um, with some some of the promoters that are doing the next. I think it's Helen, Helen Heaven or Heaven, Heaven and Hell, Hell or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so there's one coming up very soon, but there's they're already booking the next one in 2024, and. Um, we haven't, you know, solidified anything, but there's talk about getting us out to do something like that. I think the band would do great in Mexico, um, South America. You know, um, I'd love to get us down in those in those regions as well. You know, what would be perfect for you guys is seventy thousand tons of metal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. You're right. That would be and epic. There's, there's been talk about that, um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think the band would do great on any oh, of those yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, hell yeah, man. What I was really impressed by when deb you know debut shows like when bands come out and it's their first show, uh, I think it's important to obviously be prepared and be rehearsed and you know have your merch and all that. But I was really impressed that you just right from the get go, you're like huge banner, huge <laughs> uh, scrims, like just epic from the very beginning. I think like that's such a it's so impactful to do from right right from the get go. It's just like people just take you so much more seriously when you just come out I like agree. with come out with everything and it's like it's just so much more impactful yeah. it, it um man i don't know it's 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 something that's just part of me and my nature i always start out saying to myself even though i don't even believe it um okay i'm just gonna do this mellow low-key i'm not gonna go overboard and that never happens with me. I always, it's like, if I'm going to do something, eventually I'm like, okay, I can't do this half ass. I'm going all the fucking way. So, you know, when I found out um, about the gig, obviously um, I went, man, we got to, this has to look pro. This has to look how I envision it in my head. I don't want us to go up there, you know, just in our jeans and sneakers and, and you, know, no. you know, yeah. which, Nothing wrong with those bands, um, but that's just not how I envisioned this thing, right. and um, and so of course I wanted to make it. I wanted to make that impact, and I I saw it all in my head, and and so you know I was scrambling to get scrims made, and then the backdrop was that's the biggest backdrop we could fit on that stage, and um, I remember talking to the promoter. Um, and I said, hey man, so what's the size of the, you know, uh, of the backdrop that we can use? And he was giving me some sizes that weren't quite right. And then I finally like, I got to the bottom of it and I was like, okay, this is the biggest. And so that's what I had made. And um, I mean, it looked massive. It was like we, 14 oh, by 14 or 15 something. 15 by 18. <laughs> That's I like, mean, it's pretty big, man. That's, that's like the big. biggest backdrop I've seen, like from a, from a debut show ever. Yeah, like that was like a yeah, cannibal yeah. corpse backdrop size. Yeah, to oh, totally, huge. totally. And because you know, I was looking at at pictures of that venue, and I was looking at other bands that had used backdrops there. Now, the 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 funny thing is that when I ordered the backdrop, um, the promoter calls me, and he says, "Hey, man," he goes, "So I have some good news and bad news," and I said, "What's up?" And he goes, "Well," he goes, "The venue." just installed an led wall and i was like okay and he goes so he goes they don't want like any of the bands to use a backdrop because they you know they're just trying to save time and you know it's easier to just do the led wall and i was like man i just like paid and ordered this thing and he goes i just did too because he had one for the festival man. okay and um and he goes you know i'm sorry man and i and i said dude, I'm bringing the backdrop. <laughs> and he goes, just bring it. He goes, and, you know, we'll see what we can do. And so luckily um, they let us use the backdrop. And um, Yeah, you know, it was um, it was a quick uh, setup. Wasn't yeah, it, was, it yeah. wasn't, it didn't take long at all. And, and you know, uh, uh, I have to say thanks to Scum, to my buddy Scum, Scum Love. 
um, who was stage managing at that uh, at that festival, and he helped us out with the backdrop as well. And um, he was hustling. Yeah, he was definitely hustling. Um, but I also have to th uh, thank all our crew. Um, we had an amazing crew that came down to rehearsals, um, you know, and and were helping. Um, with everything, man, you know, scrim set up and, um, you know, uh, my guitar tech, Carl, um, Lalo, who just helped with scrims. He helped with the backdrop. He's kind of like a utility guy that just does everything. Um, our makeup people, Candy, um, Jackie, um, who else did we have on there? I think that's all our crew. And then Lalo brought a couple of, uh, the guys, I don't remember their names. Um, but a huge thanks to all those people that helped us out because I mean, without them, we wouldn't have, you know, I didn't know how to fucking do all that shit. So. Yeah. The makeup looked great. Candy did a great job. She like, did. How did it, I mean, that was, is that the first show you've done with full like yeah. corpse paint type oh, makeup? Yeah. 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 Was that, was that like, did you have any issues with like getting in your eyes or anything or was it pretty, pretty easy? No, it was actually pretty, I got it in my eyes afterwards when I was taking, trying to take it off. Um, but during it was fine. Um, but yeah, that was my first time ever doing a gig with full corpse paint. Like oh that. yeah. Um, I did a video once for this band from Mexico and I was, um, I shot my part of it out here in LA and I was, it wasn't f really corpse paint. It was just like all white. Um, and, uh, but that was as, as close to that as I got, but this thing, it felt good. It felt natural. It just like a, it just everything that we've done with this band has felt natural to me, and I think it's because it's it's just something that I envisioned when you know when this thing was coming together and when I was um, putting all the pieces you know in place and everything. It was just like you know when we decided to do it in Spanish. It was just a natural thing. I remember we were here when Pedro was like, "You want me to sing in English or Spanish?" And I was just like, "Spanish," like it just felt natural. So. Um, applying and doing the makeup i mean just feels natural but also you know um there might be a time where we don't do it and you know we might do something different um i don't know uh but i, I don't want us to be always in that makeup thing you know yeah, um yeah. because there are going to be times where maybe we just just doesn't feel right and so we won't do it anymore um, but right now it feels good it just i think it adds to it it adds to I don't know the 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 visual of the song if that oh, yeah. makes any sense yeah you know? the visuals are very important for the way the tracks uh, the tracks put out a specific like sonic uh image so yeah. i think the way you chose to do the makeup and the way you chose to have the scrims and the backdrop with the album artwork and what Pedro's doing with the rituals and yeah. the, the sage and the feathers yeah. and all the whatever leaves the, the shit he had. Um, it's like, <laughs> whatever you were doing up there, Pedro. No, but everything like everything worked very well and flowed very well together. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I think it's just, like I said, I, I told Jordan, like, I think the, the stars really aligned Definitely. for this project. And I want to, I want to tell you face to face, like, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of like all the hard work you put into this project for over two years. And like, I really do think the stars aligned for this project for you. I so. agree, man. And thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> you know, what, what most of you don't know is that literally in, in here in the studio is where mm -hmm. it really came to life for me um because this was yeah we're talking about two years ago maybe even a little bit longer when i first came in here um and we started just working on music um it was here man and there was nothing happening i wasn't doing anything it was just like writing music and you know had no plans really of of even taking this live or anything like that back then yeah i just wanted to get this music out um so, you know, this place always has a, a big, you know, uh, spot in my heart because it's like where it kind of started for me. Um, so that's a, a big thing for me. Um, so to be back here, I mean, and to be looking, be staring at our, our artwork and our CDs is, is amazing. Um, you know, and I'm always going to be thankful, grateful to you for helping me with this because there were times it was just Alex and I in here like there were many nights where it was just the two of us in here working on music and that was it and packing up and going just and grinding then, away yeah it was just grinding and um you know uh that garden amp man it was like I I felt like I was carrying around almost four years worth of things yeah and 
emotions and everything. And they kind of all came out at that gig. Um, that's kind of what it felt like for me. It was very it did for me cathartic. Too. It did for me too. It was very cathartic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're a big part of this thing, man. So, you know, um, it was definitely almost like a, in a, you know, in a weird way, almost felt like a cleansing for me. Um, like I, I got all these things out that I had been carrying around for four years and, uh, and it felt really good and it feels really good. Um, you know, and I'm looking forward to the next, the next step here. So the next chapter, a lot of the hard work done, there's going to be more ahead, but you got yeah. the first show out of the way, which yeah. is always the hardest and yeah. building up and getting the rehearsals, finding yeah. the members, yeah. getting the vibe, getting the stage performance. And now it's just a matter of, you know, booking shows, rehearsing and uh, writing more songs and just developing as a band, as a project, yeah. and it'll get tighter and it'll become more Absolutely. well-oiled machine over time, yeah. as as you know, if you've had- But they, I agree with you, man. The stars definitely lined up, they, completely, completely. It's like, yeah, we worked hard and yeah, you know, we put a lot of time and, and effort into it, but there was just something else, man, that was like, you know, that I felt behind me and sort of guiding me in a way and just putting things in front of me where they needed to be um, is really what it what it felt like, you know, and what it feels like this whole with this whole thing. Absolutely, and I think everyone else in the band feels that too because yeah. it's. I think when you guys are up there, there's like this circle of energy, like everyone was connected, and everyone was like, finally, like okay, this is this is the show, this is what we've been working for, and it just it just felt it just. It looked awesome. It sounded awesome, and it felt awesome. So I, you know, um, and I hate to keep repeating myself here, but the, the way that that gig felt to me, I hadn't felt in a while, um, mm -hmm. even with other bands that I had, you know, that I have been in, um, and I think <clears throat> a lot of it has to do with obviously they were, you know, it's a project that I started, which is one thing, but the chemistry and the camaraderie between the, the people is a huge thing for me. And when that is in place and lined up, I mean, it just, it takes it to a whole different level for me. When you're up on stage and you're sort of friends with the guys you're playing with, it, you know, you, you're, you're doing your best up there and you're doing what you do, but that, that, that part is missing. And I think that, no matter what you do, you can't fake that. Yeah. Um, and I think that people get a sense of that. Um, and that sucks, man. It sucks being in those situations where, man, you you, you really don't want to be around this person that's standing right next to you. And, you know, as soon as you're off stage, it's like you're just, you're gone because you don't want to be around that. Um, and that felt very different. And it feels very different with these guys and with this band. And, and I truly enjoy, like, you know, being around these guys. We all enjoy each other's company and stuff. And that, man, that just, it's so it's so rewarding and it feels so good um, to be in a situation like that. The last, well, one of the last times that that happened was on the 2009 Revco tour where we all got along, like, so well and we truly enjoyed each other all of us and it was like we're on the bus and everyone wanted to just constantly be hanging around each other um it was never like oh you know i'm gonna go off by myself and you know we all wanted to do everything together and um those tours are, are you're so lucky if you get to do stuff like that um like you don't realize how lucky you are <laughs> until you're not in a situation like that and you're like and you're doing amazing things and you're playing amazing shows but it just sucks man that you know you feel like okay well this guy really isn't my friend like he's really he he doesn't have my back he doesn't like you know really want to be around me you know what i mean and and that's like that's so far removed from the type of person that i am um you know when i'm in a band or, or when i'm doing something a project whatever it's like i always look at it like it's us against everyone else and when i don't feel that man it just it just sucks you know it sucks to to be doing what you love but to have that that piece missing you know totally and um i mean i think you can relate here i mean i've seen many shows um, where you could tell 
you know the band members don't really like each yeah. other or they're like it's you see this you see the gig you see the show the performance but it seems like there's four or five individual people up yes. there like going like trying to be the best uh like just all about them and Correct. they're not really playing together they're Correct. just like individuals yeah playing the parts yep. but they're not connected yep. and um you know i've been in, i've been in bands like that and it sucks it's just not it's not worth the effort if it's it's same thing with relationships man it's just like it's just like a relationship yeah. it's yeah. the same thing it's like if you're if you're with someone who doesn't want to be with you and you're slowly growing apart for whatever reason it's like it sucks and yeah. it's the same thing it's yeah. the same feeling it's the exact same thing so, except this is a five guy relationship yeah not to uh <laughs> dampen the the direction of the podcast but i do have a theme question of the podcast i don't okay. think i asked you um because it was so early in the year, but I, I've started asking this question. What was one of the darkest moments in your career? And what did you do to overcome it? Maybe um, being let go from a band many years ago um, and me not really knowing what was going to happen or what I was going to do because... Um, I was like riding this wave with this band and it literally seemed like out of nowhere, it was just like, okay, well, you know, we're really not gonna do any anything with you anymore. And I was like, what? Like, like there was nothing, there was no reason. There was no, nothing had happened. Like it was nothing like that. And I remember, um, cause I'm going back like, uh, this was like over 10 years ago. And, um, and I remember like for, you know, for a little bit, I was like, well, I'm like, I don't have a band. Like I'm not in a band and I, there's nothing on the horizon. There's no, <laughs> there's like nothing happening. And when you're like up here and you're writing that and all of a sudden it's just pulled from you, you're just like, what the hell am I going to do? And it really like screws with your head. Um, because then you start questioning everything and you don't know which direction you're going to go in and you start going, okay, am I going to quit? Am I going to, no, am I going to do something different? Am I going to do you, everything is, is just in limbo. And, um, I remember, uh, it sort of taking me a little bit to just center myself again and, um, to come down from that sort of whirlwind that I was in and look at myself in the mirror again and say, okay, I'm, this is me. I'm like, I'm still here and I'm still the same person and I will continue to move forward. Like I always do. And so, um, there's a lot of self reflecting because a lot of things that you think are important sometimes aren't necessarily important um and you get caught up in things and um i sort of had to pull myself away from all of those things and just focus on myself and i just continued to write and keep my head on my shoulders and i started to move forward and then sure enough um i started to get calls and um i ended up in a band called american head charge and um then I started doing a couple of, I did a couple of tours with them, which was amazing. They were great guys. Um, I miss Chad, you know, rest in peace. Um, just those guys just welcomed me with open arms and they were just the nicest guys in the world. We had some very successful tours. And, um, and then after that, like I got a call again to um, go back into, you know, this big band again. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, you know, I, I think it's, um, for me, man, there's so many ups and downs in my life, not even just in, you know, musically. Um, but I've always been resilient and I've always been, you know, um, I think strong in a, in a way that, I, I guess I, I, maybe I don't show my weakness to, the public or to everyone, but I might be, you know, um, suffering in private, but I try my best to be positive 
and to, you know, I always tell myself, man, there's always a light. There's always a light, you know, and as cliche as that sounds, sure enough, th there always is. And, um, you know, I, I tell people, just keep moving forward. Just keep yourself together. Don't go in a destructive or down a destructive road because that's oftentimes what you want to do. Oh, is yeah. You want to lash out in, in any way, you know. Um, and it's very tough, and I know it's easier said than done, but you have to ground yourself and really look at yourself in the mirror and really not bullshit yourself about That's hard. things. That's very difficult. It's one of the hardest things I think you can very do difficult. in life is to man. accept, you know, because a lot, I think I've, I've been there, man, and I, a lot of the things that you, you don't want to hear are the things that you need to like lean into and things yeah. you need to accept about yourself. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think that's one of the hardest parts in life is just dealing with that, that, that alone. Definitely yeah. one of the most difficult. And for me, it's, it's, um, it's come with age. Um, when I was younger, I, I, <clears throat> I, I don't think I wanted to really look in the mirror and, and really face things. Um, the older I get um, and the older I become, the, the, I don't want to say it's easy all the time, but it's easier Um to just, you know, man, yeah, I, I'm not perfect. I have flaws and faults and and it's easier for me to accept those things and to deal with them and move on. And um, but for me, it's come with time. It's come with age um, and just wisdom, if you will, from, oh, yeah. from dealing with with so many things. You know, and I think it's just because the older you get, you deal with so many more things than, than when you're younger. Um, you haven't had those experiences yet. So the older you get, the older I've gotten, it, it's become a little bit, you know, easier for me to handle stuff like that. But always, man, for me, it's 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 positivity and and um, keeping your, you know, your head high um, and just moving forward um, because things do get better. They will get better. They always do. Um, but you can't, can't let yourself get caught up in that, in that cycle and, and start doing stupid shit, you know, to yourself or to others, because that's initially what you want to do Yeah, you're just lashing out. It's hard to fight know? that. Yeah. Very much so, man. Like for me, obviously I didn't go down to the, you know, drinking drug stuff, but it's like, um, man, I would just get like so pissed or angry or whatever and, and do stupid shit like that. And I remember like. I mean, it was always to myself. Like I never did anything towards anyone. It was always like I was hurting myself. And I remember I busted a, this knuckle, which I still have a, it's still kind of fucked up from when I was younger and I just didn't know how to express myself. Just punching the wall? Yeah. Well, it was actually, a, it was a cabinet. I knocked the cabinet off the, the actual kitchen thing and just stupid shit. We're aggressive when we're younger. Yeah. Like I, I, I did that shit too. I think yeah. that's, that's normal. It's like, it's about and that's how, what it was for yeah. me, man. You know, it was crap like that, but it, you know, you look back and of course, you know, yeah, you're a kid, you're younger and shit like that, but it's just, man, experience just says so much and has so much to do with, with how you handle things. And, um, and to me, you know, man, things are always going to happen. Um, and it's, the way you handle them is that's what's going to make the difference in how you feel and how your life is going to be. Um, and that's a, that's a very important thing um, because shit gets, we get handed shit all the time and you can react and be destructive or you can learn to handle things a certain way um, in a more positive way. I think, um, which isn't always easy, but you got to keep your wits and you got to keep your head on straight, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. It's, I think, like you said, as, as we get older, we gain, hopefully we gain more wisdom yeah. and, uh, life will test every single one of us yeah. over and over and over. Oh, yeah. So it's just a matter of what kind of a person do you want to be? Exactly. That's what it comes down to. Exactly. You can choose to be happy yeah. and you can choose to uh, confront difficult situations in a positive way and do the best you can, or you Absolutely. can choose to be miserable and do Absolutely. the worst you can. So Absolutely. It just depends it's on like you. The problem is going to be here and you can dance all around it and do whatever the hell you're going to, you know, uh, act towards it. But it's like, 
at the end of the day, it's there. So you're either gonna you're either gonna deal with it and handle it the right way, or you're gonna do all this crazy, stupid shit, and the problem's still gonna be there. So right. you know, sometimes people um, when they'd find out that I have never drank or, or done any drugs or anything, and, and they're like, "Man, how do you like how do you handle things or how do you like deal with things or whatever?" And I'm like, just straight on, like head on. <laughs> I just face these things head on, man. And um, sometimes, you know, in my life, I've I've wondered, man, you know, must be, maybe it's a little easier or just numbs what you're going through or something, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, the problem's still there. And if anything, it's just going to prolong, you know, what you have to do to take care of it. Right. So I just, it, I never saw the the benefit from it, you know? And nothing, nothing wrong with people drinking or doing whatever they want to do, you know, uh, recreationally. Um, for me, it just worked. It just didn't, you know, it, it didn't, um, didn't appeal to me. I totally get it. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, Sin, it's been a pleasure. I'm, I'm so, I'm so happy that, uh, you know, you had your first gig and it went well, it went extremely well. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of the work we've done together and I'm, oh, yeah. I'm really excited to, to work on new music with you and to see Definitely. where the project goes and to, you know, see how it develops, man. So congrats on all that. And I appreciate you, man. Thank you very much, man. Thank you for everything. Thank you for having me on now, but thank you so much for the friendship, for the hard work, for all your time, for all your effort, for everything that you've done. Um, not just for the project, but for me as well as a friend, much appreciated. You know that. I love it, man. Thank yeah. you so much. So everyone check out uh, Siglos, check out the two music videos, Por los Siglos and Morir, and uh, pick up uh, pick up and stream Rituales Sagrados yeah. uh, on all streaming platforms. Grab the CDs uh, when you have a new press. Are you sold out, yeah. huh? Are you sold, sold out? Those, yeah, it's gone, man. Okay, well, when gone. there's more, grab a, grab a physical CD. Just be on the lookout for Siglos, uh, new shows and new music. So yeah. thank you so much, everyone. Cheers.